हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी आर स्टार्टिंग विद आर सीरीज ऑफ एडवांस्ड आईसी इंजन एंड द टुडेज टॉपिक ऑफ दिस लेक्चर इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू आईसी इंजन पार्ट वन सो दिस इज द टॉपिक दीज आर द टॉपिक्स ऑफ द कोर्स सो द कोर्स कंटेन्स इंट्रोडक्शन टू डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ आईसी इंजन सिस्टम इंजन क्लासिफिकेशन एंड कंस्ट्रक्शन वॉल्व अरेंजमेंट्स फ्यूल्स प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ फ्यूल्स रेटिंग ऑफ फ्यूल्स alternative fuels then we will discuss fuel air cycle and actual cycle analysis then combustion in si engine and ci engine effect of engine variables knocking then combustion chambers carburation and fuel injection engine cooling friction and lubrication then we will discuss supercharging turbocharging boost control testing and performance of engine pollution due to engine design for si and ci engine and apart from these topics we will also discuss non conventional engines but in today's lecture we are discussing the engine construction engine classification and four stroke petrol engine so introduction to ic engine engine parts and their function so here we can see various parts of ic engine like cylinder block so this is the cylinder block so it is of cylindrical shape and at the top of cylinder block there is a cylinder head so cylinder block is the main support system for the various components of the ic engine it is having a cylindrical space in it and in this space piston reciprocates when the energy generated when the power generated inside the engine cylinder the piston reciprocates inside the cylinder so this is the cylinder block next component is the cylinder head we have discussed the cylinder block next component is the cylinder head so cylinder head is here it covers the cylinder block from the top there is a gasket provided in between the cylinder block and the cylinder head so in most of the engine designs the cylinder head carries the inlet valve exhaust valve and in case of petrol engine it carries spark plug in case of diesel engine it carry fuel injector but in some other designs uh, the valves are also provided in the cylinder block uh, in the cylinder block next part is piston so piston as we have already discussed that the piston reciprocates inside the engine cylinder so this is the part which uh, transmits the power it first this is the first part which transmits the power which is produced inside the combustion chamber to the connecting rod so power which is available in the combustion chamber so this power uh, transmitted by the piston to the connecting rod piston pins are mounted on the piston so there are two types of piston rings one is compression ring and another one is oil ring so piston pins uh, in which compression ring is used to provide the seal between the cylinder and the piston so uh, the there is no leakage of the combustion products or the combustion gases uh, com uh, combustion gases from the uh, cylinder to the crank is to avoid the leakage of the combustion uh, gases and the products uh, the uh, the compression ring is provided and the oil ring serve the purpose of lubrication so these are mounted on the slots made on the piston next part is the connecting rod so as we can see here this is the connecting rod this is the connecting rod it is having two ends a small end and big end this is the there is a small end of the connecting rod and this is the big end of the connecting rod so it transmits it transmits the power uh, from uh, the uh, available from the piston to the crankcase big small end of the connecting rod is connected with the piston with the help of piston pin 
so there is a pin called piston pin it connects the small end of the connecting rod with the piston another pin which is called the crank pin it connects the bigger end of connecting rod with the crank shaft crank pin connects the bigger end of the connecting rod to the crank shaft and the piston pin which is also called the gusset pin connects the small end of the connecting rod to the piston so this is how the power is transmitted from the engine cylinder to the crank shaft with the help of connecting rod another part of the engine is the crank shaft so reciprocatory motion reciprocatory motion up and down motion of the piston is converted in the rotary motion of crank shaft with the help of crank shaft and the connecting rod so reciprocatory motion of the piston is transferred is converted into the rotary motion of the crank shaft so the output power is made available through the crank shaft next part is crank case so the lower part of the cylinder block is called the crank case it is the housing for the crank shaft and the lower part of the connecting rod crank case uh, in four stroke engine crank case also serve as a sum for the lubricating oil and in case of two stroke engine uh, there are fresh charge admitted into the crank case first then it goes to the engine cylinder inlet valve and exhaust valve this is the inlet valve inlet valve is used to transmit the fresh charge which is the uh, in case of petrol engine fresh charge is the mixture of petrol and air so inlet valve when it goes down when inlet valve goes down it opens the port it opens the port and the mixture is transmitted the mixture of air and petrol in case of petrol engine is transmitted through the inlet valve to the engine cylinder the next valve is the exhaust valve so after when the combustion uh, complete and in the uh, exhaust stroke at the time of exhaust stroke exhaust valve opens and the products of combustion goes outside to the atmosphere through this exhaust valve when it the position of the exhaust valve lowers the products of combustion or the exhaust products goes to the atmosphere or goes to the exhaust system through exhaust port when the exhaust valve opens next part is valve spring so valve springs are used to hold the valve at the proper position valve spring uh, prevent the valve bounce valve bouncing and the uh, it holds the valve against the pressure of the spring next part is spark plug so in case of petrol engine there is a spark plug which produces a spark to ignite the mixture in case of petrol engine but in case of diesel engine there is no spark plug because in diesel engines there uh there is no need of uh, providing external source for ignition the fuel injector injects fuel and the high temperature of the air uh, auto ignites the fuel so in diesel engine uh, the engine carries the fuel injector not the spark plug the other parts of the engine which are not shown here are the carburetor and fuel pump in case of petrol engine carburetor is used in case of diesel engine fuel pump is used flywheel is connected to the crank shaft because uh, uh, in case in petrol engine or diesel engine whether it is a two stroke engine or four stroke engine there is a variation uh, in the uh, torque uh, which is provided uh, to the crank shaft and the angular velocity variation is also there so to provide the uh, 
homogeneous torque at the output shaft flywheel is provided. It stores the energy during the power stroke and it supplies back the energy during the other strokes when the power is not available in the engine. Other parts are the cooling fins and the water jackets we can see here in the cylinder block and the uh, cylinder head uh, through the green part. This is showing the water jackets. The water jackets are provided in the cylinder block and the cylinder head to cool the engine. So, in case of uh, water cooling, water cooled engine, water jackets are provided. In case of uh, air cooled engine, air fins, cooling fins are provided at the outer periphery of the cylinder block and the cylinder head for providing the cooling. Next part is the camshaft. The camshaft is used to ensure the proper opening and closing of the inlet valve and exhaust valve. The uh, camshaft is provided to open and close the uh, inlet valve and the exhaust valve. So, camshaft is also used to drive the ignition system and it is used to opening and uh, it is used for opening and closing of the inlet valve and the exhaust valve. So, how it is uh, how it is used to open and close the inlet and exhaust valve we can see here. Uh, this is the camshaft and cam lobe is shown here. There is a this is the heel portion of the cam. This is the nose portion of the cam. When it rotates, it is connected with the crankshaft through the timing gear mechanism. So, here we can see the timing gear mechanism. This is the crankshaft. So, uh, it is run by the engine. The power is transmitted, the piston power, the piston reciprocatory motion is transmitted to the crankshaft and the crankshaft rotates. The crank crankshaft is having a gear which is called the crankshaft gear. When the crankshaft rotates, this gear also rotates and this crankshaft gear is in mashing with the timing gear of the camshaft. It is having the double number of teeth, camshaft gear which is called the timing gear when the crankshaft rotate, camshaft also rotate by the half speed. These are the crankshaft, camshaft lobes. This is the heel portion. This is the heel portion of the camshaft. This is the nose portion of the camshaft, camshaft, cams. So, cam lobes are mounted on the camshaft. This is the heel, this, this is the nose. And when it the cam lobe rotates, when the nose portion comes in the contact of cam follower, it <coughs> pushes this upward, then it pushes the push rod upward, then rocker arm moves in this direction and it pushes the wall stamp and the inlet valve open in the engine cylinder to admit the fresh charge in the engine cylinder. As we have seen it for the inlet valve, the same process is followed for the exhaust valve opening and closing. And when this uh, nose portion comes uh, this side and when it goes down, the cam follower moves down and uh, it uh, again closes. So, basic terminology used in IC engine are bore. Bore is the internal diameter of the cylinder. It is represented by D. Stroke is represented by L. It is equal to 2R where R is the crank radius. So, a stroke is the distance in which the piston moves the piston reci reciprocates inside the engine cylinder and this is the distance between the top dead center and the bottom dead center. There are two dead centers, bottom dead center and the top dead center. These are the two extreme positions beyond which piston cannot travel. So, top dead center is the top position 
in the in the cylinder beyond which piston will not move so this is the top dead center and this is the bottom dead center and beyond which piston will not go downward when it is in the downward motion it will not go beyond the bottom dead center so two dead centers are here top dead center and bottom dead center and the distance between the top dead center and the bottom dead center is called the stroke and in the stroke length the piston moves or the reciprocates next is the clearance volume to so clearance volume this is the cylinder head this is the tdc position and the volume between the cylinder head and the top dead center is called the clearance volume next is swept or stroke volume so the volume between the top dead center and the bottom dead center is called the swept volume this volume is swept by the piston throughout its movement that's why it is called the swept volume and stroke volume next is clearance ratio it is a ratio of clearance volume to swept volume and the value of this clearance ratio is generally kept between 3 to 5% of the swept volume compression ratio is a ratio of total volume in the cylinder to the clearance volume so total volume is the addition of clearance volume and the swept volume so this is the total volume to so vs plus vc divided by vc gives the compression ratio so for petrol engine or si engine spark ignition engine this ratio varies from 6 to 10.5 and for ci engines the compression ratio is between the 14 to 22 next is cubic capacity or we can call it engine capacity it is represented by cc so the cc cubic capacity or the engine capacity is swept volume multiplied by number of cylinder so this gives the cubic capacity or the engine capacity next topic is engine classification so engine can be classified based on the number of strokes per cycle so there are two uh, strokes uh, two types of engine uh, based on uh, the number of strokes per cycle two stroke engine and four stroke engine next is cycle of operation auto cycle engine diesel cycle engine so in auto cycle engine there is a constant uh, volume combustion in diesel cycle engine these are based on diesel cycle in which there is a constant pressure combustion method of ignition is spark ignition and compression ignition so is spark ignition engine are the petrol engine compression ignition engine are the diesel engine so based on the method of ignition means how the uh, ignition is initiated in the engine so in petrol engine the ignition is initiated through the spark plug but Uh, there is no spark plug in diesel engine so ignition is initiated through the compression means uh, the compression ratio of the diesel engine is higher the air entrapped in the engine cylinder compresses to a higher value and the uh, it compresses to a value which increases its pressure and temperature uh, when the fuel injects inside the engine cylinder in diesel engine uh, so through the compressed air it uh, burn so initiate uh, it self ignites the fuel self ignites so the method of combustion is a compression ignition in diesel engine so based on the air intake or method of charging naturally aspirated and supercharged so in naturally aspirated engine the air uh, comes uh, in the engine cylinder at normal atmospheric condition in supercharged engine there is a supercharger which increases the pressure of air or a fuel air mixture and then it delivered to the engine cylinder method of cooling air cooled engine or water cooled engines types of fuel used so engine using volatile liquid fuels like petrol ethanol are the uh, volatile liquid fuels so in si engine these fuels are used 
engine using gaseous fuels like CNG, LPG, these are called the gas engines. Then engine using viscous liquid fuel like diesel. So, in CI engine, it uses diesel. So, engine using two fuels uh, like in dual fuel engine when we can use volatile liquid fuel and gas as well. Then method of fueling, spark ignition engine. Uh, in method of fueling of a spark ignition engine, either we can use carbureted engine or port injection. We can also do direct injection in SI engine. In compression ignition, there is there are two methods uh, for fueling in direct injection or direct injection. Basically, the diesel engine combustion chamber uh, are having uh, the various types, uh, divided combustion chamber or the direct uh, or uh, combustion chamber. So, in divided combustion chamber, there, are, uh, there is a two part, there is a pre-combustion chamber. If the fueling, the inject fuel injector injects a fuel in the uh, pre-combustion chamber, then this is called the indirect injection system and in direct injection system, it directly injects the fuel into the main chamber. There is only a main chamber in direct injection system. The number of, then based on number of cylinder, there are two types of engine, single cylinder engine and the multi cylinder engine. Now, you will see the working of four stroke SI engine. So, as there are four strokes, the name implies that there is a four stroke, the working completed in the four stroke of the piston travel and uh, there are five events, suction, compression, expansion, exhaust and combustion. Suction, compression, combustion, then expansion, then exhaust. There are five events, four strokes and two revolutions of the crankshaft. So, in one stroke, there is a 180 degree revolution of crankshaft and during all four strokes, the crankshaft moves. 720 degree. So, we will see all the processes one by one. The first stroke is the suction stroke. What happens during suction stroke? At the start of suction stroke, piston is at the TDC position. So, at the start of suction stroke, piston is at the TDC position. It starts move toward the bottom dead center. The piston is at the TDC and start moving towards the BDC. And during this, when the piston starts moving from the TDC, inlet, we assume that the inlet valve open instantaneously and the fresh charge, because this is a SI engine, petrol engine. So, fresh charge means the mixture of air and fuel comes in the engine cylinder through the inlet valve. When the inlet valve opens instantaneously, the air and fuel mixture is, is started, uh, uh, started uh, coming into the engine cylinder. And this stroke continues till the piston reaches BDC, bottom dead center. And during this stroke, exhaust valve remains closed, exhaust valve is closed. Uh, in this stroke, the crankshaft moves 180 degree means half revolution and the fresh charge admitted into the engine cylinder during this stroke. There is no action of spark plug during this stroke. And when the piston reaches BDC, inlet valve close instantaneously and the other stroke starts, compression stroke. So, at the start of compression stroke, piston is at the BDC and has started moving towards top dead center. When it, it is moving uh, towards top dead center, both valves remain closed and the uh, fresh charge which was the air fuel mixture and trap inside the engine cylinder compresses until the piston reaches to the TDC position. And at the end of compression stroke, when, when the piston reaches TDC, the spark plug 
produces spark to ignite the fuel air mixture and the combustion occurs and during the combustion it uh, it produces combustion and during the combustion the exhaust uh, the gases the combustion gases develops which forces the piston downward so uh, when the combustion starts combustion happens instantaneously uh, in ideal system and the power stroke starts so when the power stroke it is also called the expansion stroke and the working stroke and during the power stroke both the valve remain closed and the piston is started from tdc to bdc both the valve remain closed and the combustion gases forces the piston downward in this stroke and the piston move moves downward and it reaches to the bottom dead center and why it is called power stroke because actual power produced during this stroke and expansion it, it is also called expansion stroke because there is a expansion of gases inside the engine cylinder during this stroke so both the valves remain closed then what happens in the next stroke there is a exhaust stroke so at the start of exhaust stroke piston is at the bdc bottom dead center and it start moving toward the tdc position so when the exhaust stroke it starts exhaust valve opens instantaneously and the products of combustion some part of exhaust gases and heat releases to the atmosphere through the exhaust port and when it moves toward the top dead center the exhaust it sweeps the exhaust gases out the engine so these are the four strokes Th this uh, these all four strokes shows the working of si engine so the working of si engine uh, is completed in four strokes of the piston and two revolution of the crankshaft so each each strokes makes 180 degree of the crankshaft and all four strokes make 720 degree of the crankshaft and two revolution of the crankshaft so this is the ideal pv diagram for four stroke si engine so 0 1 2 3 4 so 0 to 1 is showing the suction process in which the piston at the start of suction this is the suction process and during the suction stroke the piston moves from tdc to bdc at the atmospheric pressure near atmospheric pressure and from 1 to 2 there is a compression so during compression what happens both valves are closed piston moves from bdc to tdc piston moves toward uh, top dead center and it compresses the fuel air mixture and increases the pressure of mixture and 2 to 3 there is a heat addition or the combustion 2 to 3 2 to 3 there is a combustion 3 to 4 there is a expansion this is this is the compression process 1 to 2 2 to 3 is the combustion or heat addition 3 to 4 this is the expansion of gases during the power stroke 4 to 1 is heat release when the exhaust valve opens heat releases and this is shown by the process 4 to 1 then 1 to 0 is the exhaust so thank you i hope this lecture was informative jai hind